Welcome back to the Amstrad Footy Game A to Z. Uh, we're on part 8 and we're looking at some of the biggest football game releases on the Amstrad and on the 8-bit systems uh, as a whole actually. And first of all we're looking at match day. Which is looking lovely and colourful so far and uh, match of the day theme tune there. Now uh, match day. Um, was one of the most famous football releases on the uh, home computer systems in the 80s. Uh, this was in, uh, released in 1985. Now the original game was on the Spectrum. Um, it was by um, famous programmers uh, John Rittman and Bernie Drummond. Um, they were famous for uh, Head Over Heels, uh, Batman and other great games. This conversion to the Amstrad though is nothing to do with them. Um, which uh, you'll find out in a Retro Gamer magazine interview um, from a few months back. Um, this, this, this conversion is by some completely different programmers. And as you can see so far, it looks lovely and colourful, but it's incredibly slow. And uh, we've had enough of slow football games like Liverpool in the last uh, part. Unfortunately, the speed of this game makes it again, you know, pretty unplayable. For as much as it looks nice, and especially this is, I have to actually have to say, this is 1985. You know, the Amstrad had only been out, you know, less than a year when this conversion came out, and they still hadn't mastered. Uh, well, in terms of programmers, they hadn't actually really mastered the machine on how to do sprites and scrolling and stuff. But compared to the other football games released around this time, and really up to as late as 1989, this isn't too bad. I just wish they could have sorted out the speed and the uh, jerky scrolling you've got going on there. I mean, it's pretty simple stuff. I think there's only sort of one uh, um, kick uh, speed, uh, which lost the ball in the air a little bit. You can tell which uh, player you're controlling by the football boots changing colour, which is actually quite a little neat thing actually. And this could have been a really fun, simple little football game, and um, and a bit like like I said with like the Liverpool in the last uh, part. If you take the um, game in the in the emulator and uh, increase the speed up, you know this isn't actually too bad. But as before, we're judging the games on how they were released at the time in that context unfortunately uh, this one's looking really uh, really knobby these days it hasn't aged very well at all but it does have some kind of certain charm to it certainly much better than like Am Soccer and uh, Glen Hoddle Soccer was released in the same year actually it's miles miles better god knows what's happening <laughs> the ball's gone in it's a really, really rubbish goal, and it pretty much sums this game up. It's as old as the hills, but um, you know, I'd say I'll give this four out of ten. Right on to its sequel, which is a uh, much more famous. Match day two was much lauded at the time by reviewers and game players alike. This one, this version, was actually done by John Rickman and Bernie Drummond, which you can see on the title screen there. Unfortunately, they were never that good with graphics, um, I, even with Head Over Heels and Batman. Um, they were well drawn and stuff, but um, they weren't top quality uh, graphic artists. They were just awesome programmers. And unfortunately, this looks pretty uh, naff. And it's also far too slow again. And football games shouldn't be slow. This was 1987, so I guess, like, you know programmers still haven't really mastered scrolling on the Amstrad. Although this plays a lot lot better than uh, match day. It does feel like a proper foot sort of football simulation to be honest with you. It's nice they've got the um, power meter at the top of the screen there. Which also shows above the head of the play you're controlling so that doubles up quite nicely. It's a nice little feature, and obviously the higher the power meter is, the stronger the kick. In terms of representing football, yeah, I mean, you've got 
free, ki uh, free kicks and uh, throw-ins and corners and goal kicks and stuff. It's all present. Peter's taking a very slow shot and it's trickling in. <laughs> a very, very similar goal to the last one we saw on uh, match day at the end. Yeah. Um, it's not looking very impressive. I mean, it looks as old as the hills these days. Um, people loved this game at the time, so there's a lot of um, rose-tinted glasses going on here, and uh, you know, a lot of fond retro memories. But you know, in context and compared with the rest of the games, it's not looking so good. But it's still deemed a classic. I'll give it that. Um, so I was thinking about giving it about six and a half out of ten, but. I think, I think I'll increase it to 7 out of 10 just because it was one of the first football games that really came out uh, and showed showed people how it is meant to be done, even if it is far too slow. Okay, on to the next big release, which was Micropro Soccer. Now, at the time when I was growing up, um, I had some uh, neighbours and I was friends with the kids there. And uh, they had a uh, Commodore uh, 128, so that was a Commodore 64, but with uh, disk drive and 128k in memory. And I used to go around the house and play on uh, some of the Commodore games. And uh, I used to laugh at the uh, <laughs> disk loading times. It was almost as long as a cassette to load, so I used to sort of make fun of them for that. And I was uh, taking the piss out of them when Micropro Soccer was loading. It was there for 10 minutes loading up. And then my jaw just hit the floor when the game started. Uh, Micro Soccer on the Commodore is, is is amazing. I absolutely love it. It's probably my fa one of my favourite games on the Commodore. Uh, it's such an awesome football game, and uh, I couldn't wait to get the Amstrad version, which you'll see very shortly. I'm just uh, trying to sort out uh, my uh, team name there. And what's cool about this, uh, especially on the disc version on the Amstrad. Um, like yeah, it's, it's making you choose like it, your name for your team so it's designed to sort of set it up as like um, a tournament with your friends so you can save your team your scores and your stats and stuff like that and you can come back and uh, replay and have lots of battles against your friends coming around and stuff so that's really cool I'm just getting used to the uh, <laughs> menu system here it's a little confusing I think I've got it sorted now Let's uh, play ball. And um, we're off on the first match against the easiest team, Oman, an international uh, challenge. And uh, so the game started up, and uh, when, I, when I first booted this up at the time, I was hoping for the uh, a game like the Commodore 64 original, and I was, I was really quite disappointed. Um, and uh, it almost, almost made me wish I had a Commodore. But in retrospect, it's actually not not too bad, just compared to the original game on the Commodore. It's, it looks and plays really pants. And the screen size has really shrunk down. Um, it's a lot more uh, stodgier and slower. And the controls aren't as responsive. However, as a football game on its own merits, it, st it stacks up rather well actually, it's quite fun to play. I mean, uh, it's a huge range of options as you saw on the uh, previous screens. And uh, we've turned on uh, like uh, banana kicks, swerve shots and stuff, we've gone for medium power. Um, we've got headers and overhead kicks, although overhead kicks are rather difficult to do. Everything is there for what you'd expect in a football game. We've even turned on the weather. And uh, uh, here's the weather. It's a ride. We've got rain. I think there's thunder and lightning that appears as well. And um, what the rain does, though, actually makes the game a little bit easier because when they uh, try and tackle you, if they miss you, they skid around on the floor like my dudes do in there. Oh, there's some lightning. And uh, oh, and the computer has scored with a nice little bur swerve banana shot there. And here's a cool little feature. Um, they've got action replays, which is very, very rare to find on a home 8-bit game. Um, the game also features an, I an indoor um, indoor soccer version of the game, and 6-a-side or 5-a-side. So the game's really, really, really packed full of stuff. Um, it's actually quite fun to play. Um, so, you know, even though I was disappointed at the time, um, I 
still think this is actually a really good football game. Uh, it's nothing compared to the Commodore 64 original, but I'm still going to give this game. Um, I think I'll give this. I'll give this. I'm um, hovering between seven and a half or eight out of ten. Um, I'm feeling nice. I'm going to give it eight out of ten. Just see if we can score. Uh, that's the end of the match. Right. I think that will do for this part. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.